Since Stepcraft is about to release their mobile app for uh, allowing you to control your CNC um, via a app as opposed to the keyboard or the mouse, I also wanted to do a comparison with the UCR201, which is uh, another controller option that um, you can interface with UCCNC to perform certain functions like control. So I wanted to do a quick overview and uh, I'll run through some of the features and compare it to what at least I know of the app at this point. For the most, from what I've seen so far, it looks like a lot of the buttons that are on the app carried over, or a lot of the buttons that are on the UCR201 have carried over to the app. And uh, first off, um, the UCR201 has uh, the emergency stop button. Um, another stop button available on it so when you're carrying it around with you you can stop it uh, remotely so you don't have to just rely on the uh, wired emergency stop button so that's handy to have another good safety feature you'll see it has uh, five function buttons along the top and these are programmable within the plugin settings uh, the way I have it set up is the first three F1 through F3 allow you to select either X Y or Z to control. So if I select F1, that's going to choose the x-axis. And now the jog wheel is what you use to actually do the controlling. So as you turn it, you can turn it and you can feel the clicks as you turn it. And if you spin it fast, you have the ability to move it, you know, dynamically and accelerate the speed. Uh, if you look at the display, it's right now it's set to 100%. And one of the things you can do is this MPG speed button or step speed button allows you to adjust the, um, the speed uh, in, in terms of 100%, 10%, or even down to 1%. So I usually have it at about 10%. It gives me it, uh, let me switch, switch that to 10%. It allows a bit finer control. You still get a good amount of speed when you spin the jog wheel, but if you turn it slowly, it allows you to get a bit more precision. Now, the MPG that, uh, that you see listed here stands for Manual Pulse Generator. That's essentially what's happening. As this is turning, it's sending out a pulse to the uh, stepper motors, and that's what's controlling. So if I select F2, now I can control it along the y-axis. F3 is for Z. Okay. Now the F4 and F5 button I currently have assigned to uh, the manual uh, release or opening and closing of the ATC. So I think I have, let me go ahead and remove the dust boot for now. Okay. Got, um, single fluid end mill in there. I was cutting some acrylic earlier, but if I hit F4, that opens the chuck. And then F5 will close it so that I can manually um, release and attach uh, different tools. So let's go on to a couple of the other buttons. The play pause allows you to start and pause a job from here. Stop is uh, obviously to stop the job. You've got a safe Z button that you can hit. You know, once you've set your Z zero, it'll uh, automatically go to whatever you have set as your safe Z height in the UCC and C. The spindle on off allows you to uh, turn on the spindle. Turn it off. And you can see with the new tool magazine and dust boot control, it also drops and retracts the dust boot mechanism. Then you've got this access button, which allows you to toggle between different control modes. So normally I have it in access mode so that I can select X, Y, and Z and adjust the positioning uh, of, of those axes. The FRO is for adjusting the feed rate and SRO is for speed. So depending on what you want to adjust uh, during a job, if you want to adjust the speed, of uh, the, the feed rate, you can switch to FRO, toggle. So each time you hit it, okay, you'll see it toggle between 
the um, different axes. Now it's uh, even the uh, fourth axis if you have that. Then it goes to feed rate and it goes to uh, speed of the spindle. So you can adjust it again with the jog wheel to change those values. Zero axis, as you're moving your, your different axes, so like say you're on X and you hit zero axis, that allows you to zero out that particular axis. So you can do it from, from there as well. Uh, if you wanted to do a zero wall, you'd have to go in and set one of the function buttons to do that. I think what would be nice if, if there were more uh, function buttons uh, or like an alt, alt function to make each function button multi-purpose. Um, but I, that might be something that is in the app as an advantage over this. Uh, then you've got the uh, probe Z button that allows you to initiate the probing sequence with the touch probe and then a go, uh, go to zero. So it'll go to your uh, project zero by hitting that button. It's very simple. Uh, it's nice to have a hardware option, uh, again, for the preci uh, precision um, and the, the direct control, the emergency stop button. Uh, and those are probably the main advantages of this hardware controller. So it's gonna be good to see how the app compares uh, functionally. I think the, the one advantage is with the hardware controller, the feel and the, the precision that you can get with the jog wheel might be a bit better but maybe they can implement some way of uh, having a touchscreen style jog wheel controller. I've seen it in, in different, uh, in, in other apps. Like if you're an Apple user, uh, the remote control allows you to emulate the um, kind of the iPod uh, swiping motion uh, on the remote. So that might be something they could add as a future update. But either way, it's good to have an option um, other than the keyboard and the mouse to be able to control and to be wireless uh, around the CNC. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thanks for watching.